can start down on your back if you'd rather rest in the fetal position on your side or flip over to your belly. All of that is totally fine. When we start to move, we'll be on hands and knees. So I would say skip the child's pose for right now. Give your knees a break and find a position that makes you feel really good. To make this position as comfortable as possible, you may need to bend your knees or add a support underneath them. You might want to take your hands out to the sides or bend your elbows and rest your hands on your body to connect to your breath. You might be well served by having something underneath the back of your head like a pillow or a blanket. Sometimes even a yoga block feels good there. And how it looks. And since we're not worried about looks, you could close your eyes. With your eyes closed, I'm hoping you can feel things from the inside more. Let's start with noticing the movement of the breath. As it comes in at your nose, or if your nose is stuffy, your nose and your lips. Moves down to fill the space under your collarbones, inside your rib cage, and create shape change through your belly. Watch as the breath moves back up and out. Feel the places in your body that move to create space to receive, and the places that release as the breath goes back out. Right there already we see some balance. Balance between the effort of creating space for the breath and letting go. Expand your awareness beyond just the flow of your breath to feel your whole body. And notice what you're working with tonight. Any areas of tightness or tension or tiredness. Note your overall energy level. Then take another pass of your attention through your body and notice all the things that feel just fine right now. All the places that weren't calling for your attention when you first scanned through. Here's a chance to be grateful for all the places that feel just fine right now. Go a little deeper still. Notice the quality of your thoughts, your emotions. See what you'll we'll be working with on that psycho-emotional plane tonight. That should bring you toward an intention for your practice. This intention has to do with what you're doing on the mat in the first place. What is it you're looking for from your practice tonight, and what is it you want to bring to bear? What's the attitude that will guide you through? Keeping this intention forefront, keeping your gratitude for the places that feel just fine and your awareness for the places that might need some extra care. And keeping connected to your breath, use the next several breaths to bring yourself forward onto hands and knees, where your head, where your feet currently are. So your head's facing my way and your feet are facing toward the back of the room. Now as you get here, you may need to add some cushioning. You could triple fold your mat by pulling it in towards you to go underneath your knees. You can do the same for the top of your mat too, so that the heels of your hands are higher than the 
pads of your fingers, and that can decrease some pressure on your wrists. Make any adjustments you need to so that this feels quite comfortable. And start some cat and cow. That means when you inhale, you'll lift your tailbone, sink your belly down, loop your shoulders down, your back look up. And when you exhale, you'll pull your belly up, let your chin and tailbone tuck. Y'all keep going. Back and forth on your breath. There's no rush. Slow is good. Take about three more rounds. Feel the articular movement between your vertebrae, which is to say, feel the snake-like movement in your spine. And we'll start to build that bigger. First by shifting the hips back. Next time you're in your cat back, lean your hips back, take them down over your heels, bring your belly towards your thighs, your forehead toward the floor. Have a full breath down here in your child's pose. Then we'll come up and into cow. When you next breathe in, lift your shoulders over your wrists, lift your tailbone up, look forward. As you breathe out, come through cat and shift back. You can come back a little or you can come back all the way to child's pose. Inhale, lift up, tailbone up, chin up, shoulders over wrists. Good, do about three more like that. Exhale to round your back and come down. Inhale, along the way up, arch your back. Park your shoulders over your wrists, lift your chin. Yeah, one more time. Cool, next time you come back to child's pose or in that direction, hang out. Take about three breaths there. Maybe this feels like a stretch along the tops of your ankles, the fronts of your shins, your thighs, your glutes, your low back, your entire back. Feed it with one more big breath. Let's take this articular movement even bigger. Next time you breathe in, come up, lift your tailbone, lift your chin, and as you breathe out, instead of going back, come forward. Let your hips lower down toward the floor so your thighs come down and then your belly and then your rib cage and maybe your chest or your chin. Next time you breathe in, curl up through a low cobra, maybe even like an up dog on your knees, round your back, come back to child's pose. We have now a two breath cycle. The inhalation will roll you up, and start to lead you toward the back bend. The exhalation lowers the back bend down toward the floor. Gorgeous. Your inhalation, loop your shoulders down. Press the floor away, come up, and once your shoulders are over your hips, arch your back, around your back, and come down. Okay. About three more cycles like that. If this doesn't suit your knees, you don't have to come back so far with your hips, or you could add some padding. If it doesn't feel good on your wrists or your shoulders, you can stay with the cat-cow movement exclusively and leave out the shift of your shoulders and hips through space. Gorgeous, y'all. Stay connected just to the flow of your breath. Go through one more complete cycle. Inhale to lift up, exhale to lower down. And choose either end of the spectrum. Either come back to child's pose if it works for your knees, or just rest down on your belly if that feels better. That gives you an option if your knees aren't 100%. From here, we're going to do a side bend, just on one side. Then we'll have a moment before we do it on the other side. Work your shoulders and uh, arms all the way over to the right so you feel a stretch coming up the left. Remember, you can do this from your belly. Good. Then settle down. Take five or six Great big breaths that you feel expanding through the left side waist, left side ribs, left shoulder, left armpit. In the next breath or two, come back to square. You should feel happily uneven, like your left side is awake and the right side isn't yet. You can hang out right there, just being in that odd feeling, or you can take a clearing out, moving up through cat-cow, down to your belly and come back. So there'll be two breaths here. If you wanna flow, you'll inhale up through hands and knees, and you'll exhale to roll down, belly, chest. Maybe your chin taps the floor, then you'll inhale to curl up, and exhale, come back to child's pose, or return to your belly or come to your belly if you realize that wasn't good on your knees. Now as we come into the second side, you'll work your hands, your shoulders over to the left, 
Feel the stretch emerge up the right. You may need to come farther off your mat or not so far off your mat. The imbalances that we accrue left to right can be pretty marked especially in the upper body, because we use our dominant hand in such a different way than we use our non-dominant hand. That might mean you need to go farther or not so far on this side. It might also mean that you'd like to stay longer than the next three or four breaths. Please know that's totally fine with me. As long as I see you breathing, I'm happy to see you holding a pose indefinitely. Once you feel like you've got to even this, then you'll come back to neutral and you won't miss anything because we're following the asymmetrical movement with a symmetrical. As before, you can hang out in the difference between the two sides, in your child's pose or down on your belly, or you can move through that flow to inhale, lift up, shoulders over wrists, and exhale, lower your thighs down, your hips down, your belly down, your ribs down, your chest down. Inhale, curl up off the floor, engage your back muscles, gorgeous. Exhale, come on back to child's pose. Five, stay and have a breath. If your knees don't like child's pose, you can come to tabletop or you can twist from your belly. We'll be taking a twist. And for this twist, you'll press your right hand into the mat so much that your right elbow lifts up off the floor. Then you'll feed your left arm through underneath, threading the needle toward the brick wall on your right. Gorgeous. So your left ear might hit the floor or your biceps. If you don't feel much and you want to feel more, you can lift your hips up a little or a lot. If this isn't good from your, for your knees, you can do it from your belly. Make sure that your neck is cool with the choices that you're making. Take three or four more big breaths. You know the drill, we move out of the asymmetrical pose back to a symmetrical one. So back to child's pose or tabletop or to your belly. Take a breath or two to notice the unwinding that happens when you leave a twisting pose. Choose either to stay as you are or through the two breath cycle, you'll inhale to come up through tabletop, arching your back. Exhale to roll down. Good, inhale to curl up and exhale. Return back to your home base. Have a breath. Now we twist with the right arm moving under the left. Press down into your left hand more so your left elbow clears up off the mat. Feed your right arm through. You're on the outer right shoulder, maybe the outer side of the head on the right comes down, or you can rest your ear on your biceps. You could lift your hips up a little or a lot. You could even just straighten your legs and twist from your belly. Your left hand could stay where it is on the floor, or you could press down into it slightly more to enhance the twist. Check with your neck, make sure it's okay. Once the twist to this side feels equivalent to what you think you got on the first side, you'll come back to neutral. And twisting can feel really different side to side, just like that side bend did. Neutral could be hanging out in child's pose. It could be hands and knees. It could be sliding forward to your belly. We'll take about 10 more breaths before we begin the trip up to standing. That gives you time to do several rounds of that flow that we worked, low down to the ground like an inchworm, inhale up and exhale down. It also gives you a chance to come into a downward facing dog if you prefer, to just rest, to do a plank, to do push-ups, in case you thought it was athletic yoga. Take another three or four breaths.
let's all move up toward hands and knees. We're working our way towards standing at the front of the mat. You can come my way or you can come your own way if my way doesn't work for you. From hands and knees, we could try turning the toes under and lifting the hips up in a downward facing dogish shape. Then we'll walk the feet in closer to the hands as the knees stay really bent. So eventually your thighs will catch your belly and your forehead and head, um, your head will hang heavy down. Your knees should be so bent that your hands could tuck into opposite elbows without adding extra stretch to your hamstrings. So your belly is resting on your thighs. If that doesn't feel good, you could keep your hands down on the floor. If it does feel good, you could hold your elbows and sway your head or your torso from side to side. Take one more big breath. Now slide your hands to your thighs, just above your knees. Bend your knees a lot. Send your hips down, 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 down. Your head lifts up, 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 up. So it clears up over your heart. Perfect. Feel your back muscles engaged. Now press down into your feet and rise up to standing. Good. So stand toward the front of your mat. If you aren't all the way there, take another step or two so that you're there, but stagger with your neighbor so that you'll have room for your arms to come out to the side. You don't have to be all the way at the front. We just want room to step back. Good. Take your hands to your hips. Reach around to the front of your hips and feel the boniest part you can find. Try to line up your second toes about with that hips width distance you found from the bony front of your hips. Take a little bend in your knees. Do a few pelvic tilts here. You could inhale to take your belly forward and slide your tailbone back and exhale to do the opposite. Some standing cat-cow exploration of how much your pelvis could move through space if you let it. Because we're going to ask it to fix right in between the cat and the cow. Maybe even ever so slightly toward the cat tilt. So you feel your belly coming in and your pubic bone is moving up towards your sternum and your abs are working. You can check by moving your hands up higher and poking and underneath whatever padding you might have. You've got, <laughs> hey cupcakes, you've got uh, some engagement deep down. Now, hold that engagement. Straighten your knees most but not all of the way. So don't let them hyperextend and pop back. But don't, you don't need to bend them much. We'll be there in a moment. For now, we'll shift the weight into the right leg. And with an inhalation, bend the left knee. Let the left heel come up off the floor. Exhale, heel comes down. Good. We'll pulse that a few times. Try not to rock over toward the right. If you'd like, you can start to lift higher. Inhale to lift and exhale to come down. You might even lift so high that your right knee is up. Sorry, your left knee is up in line with your left hip. Good, you guys look super steady. So very little rocking from left to right, that's awesome. Having a fixed gaze down on the floor can help with that, making sure your breathing helps too. One more time. Inhale to lift your leg and exhale to take the foot down. Take a moment, release your arms, shake out through your right leg. And we'll do the same on the other side. Hands to the hips so we can feel anything that is trying to rock side to side as we get started. Press down more into your left foot. With your next inhale, bend your right knee, lift your right heel up off the floor, and with your exhale, take your foot back down. So that gives us options. We could stick with the sweetest option where the ball of the foot is down on the floor completely throughout the cycle. Or you can lift up higher to your tippiest toes or clear your foot up off the floor. Inhales lift, exhales lower, and the left hip and left lower leg are doing a lot of work to help hold you in space. So it's not just the core, it's also stability coming from the hips. Real important for us as we move one leg through space, which is what most sports require. One or two more so this side feels even, an inhale to lift, and an exhale to lower. And when you feel like you've gotten there, take your foot down and shake out through your left leg. We'll do that again, but we'll do just five rounds, and this time you're free to move your arms as well. If you liked feeling your hands on your hips, that's cool. If you liked having the ball of your foot down on the floor, totally cool. Come back into your right leg. Connect to your breath. When your breath next comes in, inhale, bend your left knee, lift your arms, either to shoulder height or all the way up. As you exhale, touch your foot down, touch your arms down. Good. Inhale to lift and exhale to lower. Super, we're sticking with the same side and we'll do three more. Right leg stays so that the right hip gets the challenge of holding steady. Nice, two more. And move with your breath. It's fine to be slower than the rest of us. Good. 
Keep your left foot down, shake your right foot out, shake out through your shoulders. Do all that on the other side. Weight comes into your left leg. Inhale, lift your arms, bend your right knee. Arms can come out to the sides or all the way up. Good, exhale, take them down. And we'll keep going. No rush to get through these last three. Go on your breath. Adjust as needed for what's going on with your left ankle, your left knee, your left hip. Keep your right foot down, shake your left foot out. Round of breath. Weight will be back in the right foot. This time as you inhale, bend your left knee, lift your arms up. As you exhale, take your hands to your right thigh. Stretch your left leg long, send it back behind you. Let the ball of your left foot find the floor. Good, lean your shoulders forward more than you initially wanted to. As long as that feels okay. If it feels like it's too much stress, lifting the shoulders will make this easier. I'm thinking about keeping the shoulders forward over the knee so you can create a diagonal line from your left heel up through the crown of your head. Yeah, and take your hands over to your right thigh. You're gonna want them there for what comes next. Five times, we'll step forward uh, into chair pose and back. Goes like this. Inhale, left foot alongside the right. Keep your knees bent. Exhale, left foot stretches long. Good, four more. Inhale to come forward and exhale to reach back. If you feel it, keep going. In your outer right hip, you're doing it right. If it feels too strong in your outer right hip, straighten the bend in your right knee, lift up a little. If you came to party one more time, inhale, stay very low. Exhale, stretch your leg back. Good, inhale, left foot alongside the right, and exhale, rise to standing. Whew, shake it out. Again, some heat. So you build out that chair pose on the other side. Weight will be in your left leg, and your right leg will lift. Inhale, raise your arms, raise your right knee. Exhale, take your hands to your left thigh, reach your right toes way back. Now, as they come back, check that they're not coming behind your right, uh, your, sorry, your left leg. Uh, that would make it a lot tougher to balance because it's like being on a tightrope. Instead, your feet are still at the hip width dis distance that you located earlier when your hands were there, uh, on your hips. And your shoulders are forward. As you press back through your right heel, you'll lift up through the crown of your head. Now five times like it's a gif, looping. Inhale, right foot alongside the left. Good, exhale, right leg back. Inhale forward and exhale back. Good, three more. You can sweeten it by not stepping back so far and not keeping such a lunge in your left knee. Or last time, pretty spicy, try to keep your left knee in a decent lunge. Good. Now your right foot comes forward and you'll rise to standing. That was so much fun. We're gonna do it again. And this time you'll have the option to keep your arms lifted and great news, we'll just do three rounds. Start from your mountain pose, space between your feet. Inhale, lift your arms, bend your left knee, lift your left knee up a little or a lot. Exhale, reach your left toes back. Now you're in a long lunge here. Keep your arms lifted. Inhale, left foot alongside the right. Exhale, reach your toes back. Gorgeous, y'all, two more times. Good. Try to keep your hips really steady like you did when we first started this flow. Super. Inhale forward to chair. Exhale. Ah, release it. Shake it out through your shoulders, through your lower legs. Let's do a round of three on the second side. Inhale. Lift your arms. Lift your right knee. Exhale. Reach your right toes way back. Lean your shoulders forward over your left knee. Good. Inhale. Step your right foot forward alongside your left. Exhale. Take it back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, come back. One more time, try to keep your hips really steady. Super. Inhale, forward. Exhale, rise to standing. Relax your arms down. Roll through your shoulders. Tread through your feet. We're done with that chair pose unless you loved it, in which case that will be an option as we continue just a little deeper into this flow. Otherwise, instead of coming forward to chair, you'll come forward to the crane. So we'll be coming back to the arrow lunge and returning up to crane. It's a lot of fun. You can also do it with your arms out to the sides, which helps a little with balance. Let's give it a whirl. Inhale, lift your arms, lift your left knee. As you exhale, reach your left toes way back. Good. And as you inhale, straighten the bend in your right knee, lift your left knee up. Awesome, y'all. Exhale, reach back. Inhale to lift, your shoulders are over your hips. Exhale to lower, your shoulders are over your knee. 
How about two more? Inhale forward and exhale back. This should feel a lot like running. Inhale forward and exhale back. This is our way out. Inhale forward and exhale, foot down, arms down. Roll through your shoulders, tread through your feet. We'll do about five on the other side. Inhale, lift your arms, lift your right leg. Exhale, reach your right toes way back. Good. Inhale, drive through, press into your left leg, lift your right knee up. Awesome. Exhale, come back down. About four more. Goes on your breath. To make it sweeter, you could take your arms out to the side to aid with balance. You could have hands in prayer or hands to your hips. Or you could just be doing chair pose. You can also stand there and visualize. Visualization is quite powerful. Good. One more time. We finish by rising forward and step the right foot down. Ah, I have very happy news. That's it for the pulsing. Now we'll enjoy the heat that we've built um, to get through a few lunges here standing. Let's start with the right leg taking the weight again. Inhale, lift your arms, lift your left leg. Exhale, reach your left toes back, shades of where you just were. But instead of coming forward, use your next breath in to open up to a crescent lunge. That means your shoulders come up over your hips. Here are some ideas. You can give your shoulders a break by lowering your arms down. That could be out to the side or like this. This is one I call like Renaissance painting annunciation. So your thumbs roll back and your pinkies roll forward and your shoulder blades squeeze in toward each other. It gives you some sweet stretch across the front. If this feels a little wobbly, you could spin your left heel down like a warrior one. There's also an option to bend your left knee some and play with the placement of your pelvis so that this feels best for you. Let's take another three to five breaths. Breathe slow. With your next breath in, lift your arms up. As you breathe out, lower your left heel down, open your shoulders and hips toward the left. Now your right knee might get some ideas and it might try to roll over toward the inside of the mat, don't let it. Instead, keep your right glutes very strong so that your right knee continues to track forward. Good. You can always lower your arms if your shoulders are tired or we hang out here with the arms parallel to the floor, but let's roll the thumbs back and the pinkies forward like we did in Renaissance painting. Good. Look forward over your right palm. Take another slow three to five breaths. We'll come out of this carefully. We'll inhale, spin to the ball of the left foot, square back forward through a crescent lunge. Then exhale, lean forward, that arrow lunge. Inhale, come up to crane balance or step forward to chair. And exhale, bring your foot down, bring your arms down, take a couple breaths to shake things out. Side two, left leg will take the weight and your right leg will lift. We'll go in, we'll hold our warrior one and our warrior two, or a crescent lunge and our warrior two, a couple breaths. We'll flow in by inhaling, lifting the right knee up. Exhale, reach your right toes back. Now inhale, lean your shoulders back over your hips. Here's where we'll stay in crescent lunge. Option to take your right heel down if that feels better. Option to bend your right knee so you can find optimal alignment of your pelvis. Option to lower your arms. Again, thumbs would roll back and the pinkies would roll forward and the shoulder blades would squeeze together and maybe your gaze even lifts some so you feel extra open across the front of the chest. Lots of room for the breath. If there's some other arm arrangement that feels better, do that. Take three to five slow breaths. Now you're opening the front of the body, engaging the back. Important balance from front to back. Let's work side to side. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, lower them back down parallel to the floor. Spin your right heel down to the floor. You're in warrior two. Your left knee shouldn't get any ideas about coming my way. Instead, it stays tracking uh, along the edge of the mat, pointing forward. Good. As before, let's try thumbs back, pinkies forward, and you can bend your elbows to whatever degree feels good. Move your thumbs back in space. So again, the back of the body is engaged, the front is open. Feel the inside, outside lines of your hips. 
And you can look forward over your left fingertips. Another three to five slow breaths. Let's work our way out carefully. Inhale, sweep your arms up, spin to the ball of your right foot, square forward. Nice. Exhale, lean forward. Choose chair or crane as your exit. Inhale to come forward. And exhale to stand in mountain pose. Tread through your feet, roll through your shoulders. Shift the weight back into your right foot. Inhale, lift your left knee, lift your arms, stay there. Make it into balance pose by holding. See where you could relax more. Maybe that's softening your elbows like you did in your warrior two. Keep your core engaged. That engagement we felt under the cupcakes helps to keep the shoulders forward. So we're not leaning back to counterbalance the weight of the leg coming forward. Have one more breath in. As you exhale, send your left toes back, reach your arms forward and pause somewhere before your foot hits the floor. Good. So now it's a warrior three variation, maybe a diagonal-ish warrior three. If you like more ease, take your left toes down to the floor. If you like more spice, lift your left leg up and tip your chest down in equal measures. Three to five slow breaths, and we're done with balance on this side. You want the spicy exit, come back through crane. Use an inhale, drive your left knee through. It bends and lifts. And exhale, step down. Otherwise, just break the pose and shake it out. Last two standing things on the other side. Now it's your left leg that takes the weight. Left toes are spread good and wide. Inhale, lift your arms, lift your right knee. Stay there. Take several breaths there. If what this feels like is a whole bunch of pinching in the front of your right hip, lower your leg down some. There's also the option to do this, like a little prancing pony pose with the ball of your foot down on the floor. Uh, keep breathing. We'll swivel this into our warrior three prep. Let this be a breath in. As your breath goes out, reach your right toes back. They won't hit the floor this time, and your left leg can straighten most, but not quite all of the way. Not quite all so that we don't hyperextend and lose access to the corrections that come up from the left lower leg. You guys look awesome. Remember the sweet option of having the ball of the right foot down on the floor, right toes touching the floor. You can also adjust the placement of your arms, three to five slow breaths to finish. And you can either just walk your way out of the pose or inhale, pull your right knee through to finish. Awesome, exhale, step your foot down, shake your arms out. We're going to be coming over to the wall. And if you wanna replicate the sequence at home or you're doing it at home, you can do this um, at a wall or at a closed and locked door. Just make sure the door is locked so that nobody starts to come in and whaps you in the head. You can also do most of the folds that we'll do down on the floor using a chair. In fact, you could do this whole sequence using a chair. And to demo that, I'll use this area because this is maybe about chair height. So come over to the wall, do bring your mat and any props that you know you might like and maybe your sweater because we're not coming back to where we were before. Yeah, sh the short side of the mat. And there's plenty of room over here. We can be quite tight together. We don't need much space. You can also use the column. So Tanya, if you want to use the column, that's fine. Or you can unfold the chair. Or you can use that door. Cool. We'll be coming down soon, but first, a down dog at the wall, or you could take the palms to like your kitchen counter or a chair. Your hands will come to the wall and your feet will walk back. Your knees will bend as much as they need to. So you come into this L shape near the wall. Exactly. Now, depending on what's going on with your back and your hamstrings, you might have your feet directly underneath your hips or they could be slightly farther back. Notice how that'll put slightly more pressure down into your Achilles and calves. So make sure that this feels good. Notice what's going on with your shoulders. You may need to rotate your thumbs up more or your thumbs down more so that this feels really nice for your shoulders. 
It's okay to press against the glass door, Tanya, if you want. It's probably okay. going to feel more steady. Try bending your left knee and bumping your right hip to the right, kind of sassy-like. Take a couple breaths there. Maybe you feel this more along the outer right hip. We'll go the other way. Straighten your right leg, bump your left hip to the left. Stay on the side until it feels balanced and even. And when you get there, come back up to square. We'll keep right here. Step your left foot forward. Angle your right heel in some toward the midline, just a tiny bit, whatever feels best for you. Now we're looking for more stretch in the outer right, uh, in the right calf. You may need to step your right foot back to get there. Yep, pinky toe side of the foot is down, the heel is down. Couple breaths with your legs straight-ish at the knee. A kinder, gentler version of the arrow lunge that we were doing earlier. There's also an option to bend your right knee some. Let your right heel lift up if it needs to. Feel the stretch change its location in the back of your lower leg. Super. Let's change legs. Take your right foot forward, step your left leg back. Angle your left heel in a smidgen if that feels good for your knee. Maybe you can keep your left knee and toes facing directly forward if that feels good. Uh, press down through your heel. You can even press your hands into the wall to give you more anchor down through your heel. I'll finish with a few breaths with the left knee bending. Rearrange the angle of your left foot if you need to so that feels good. If your left heel needs to lift up off the floor for this to feel okay, that's fine too. Once this side feels even, walk your left foot forward towards your right foot, lift your head up. Take your right palm to the wall. Walk over to the left and turn away from your right hand. Let your right palm be at about uh, shoulder height. Your thumb is up and your pinkies are down. Yeah, your pinky is down, just one. <laughs> Perfect. You get to choose how far you turn away from your arm here. This is a stretch that you should feel up maybe your biceps in the front of your shoulder and into your pecs. It should be pleasant. It shouldn't be um, like a nerve pain feeling. It shouldn't make your arm feel like it's going to sleep. You can always bend your elbow or turn out of this to make it feel better. If it's feeling good, turn your head away from your arm, look out into the middle of the room. You could even take your left hand to your left hip. It feels very Superman-like. About three more breaths. We'll turn out with the third exhalation. So we spin back toward the wall and creep your fingers higher up. They can go toward about one o'clock if there was a clock on the wall. And it might even feel nice to lift up to your tippy toes so you can work your hand higher, then lower your heels back down. Now, if this feels like just pinchiness in the front, uh, in the top of your shoulder, you can walk your hand farther back or farther forward so you're working around wherever that pinch is. So pinch isn't good. Pinch isn't something that's going to change. Good. You might enjoy, again, twisting away from the wall a little bit. Turn to the left. About three more breaths.
We'll unwind and do the other side. Use your exhalation to let it go. Maybe roll your right shoulder out a few times. Take your left hand to the wall. Your thumb is up at about shoulder height. You're turning away from the wall to whatever degree feels good for you. And you know now we're here for maybe 10 breaths total. So don't be a hero and go as far as you can at the beginning. It's always okay to soften the bend in your elbow to move out or to come back in. When you feel like you're in a good spot, your right hand could come to your right hip. You can turn your head to the right too. Remember, as we go through the second side, you can always stay longer. You can also come out sooner. Now you have a sense where we're going. We can use an exhalation to roll out when you feel like you've had the right amount. And we'll walk the left hand higher up the wall to like 11 o'clock, provided that that doesn't pinch in the top of your shoulder. You could even lift up to tiptoes, press your hand to the wall, and then lower it back down. Stretch through the underarm. Make sure it feels good. Again, pinching isn't anything that's productive. Pinching isn't teaching you a life lesson or anything. It's not no pain, no gain here. It's just the way your shoulder is put together and you might be getting some compression there, a bone on bone along the top of the shoulder. So work around that and enjoy a few more breaths. If you can make the breath really big, you're inflating this from the inside and there's a correspondence between the breath and the stretch. Stay with this until it feels like you've had enough. When you have, take your arm down, roll out through your left shoulder. Take your left hip even closer to the wall and come down to sit on your mat. We're coming to legs up the wall. The hardest part of it is getting there. So you'll come down to sit on the mat with your left hip really close to the wall and you'll swivel around. As you swivel, you'll send your legs up the wall Good. And then there will be a moment of inglorious scooting <laughs> where you get closer and closer and closer to the wall. Now everything that we're going to be doing from this position could happen flat out on your mat. So if you find that this wall deal just doesn't feel right for you, you can always come out and do it flat. You can also add some extra cushioning like a blanket could go between your body and the floor because the weight of the legs is helping the pelvis settle down which is really cool until it doesn't feel good anymore. So if you're real bony, um, you might need to add some cushioning and that can help a ton. So. Negotiate with your neighbors so you can find a place to rest your arms that feels good. It could be like jet airplane wings in a V alongside your hips, thumbs rolled to the left and right. It could be that you've got space out to the sides for a T or a W, or you can make a diamond shape like the A in the YMCA dance. Elbows go wide and the hands stack just past the crown of your head. That can be a nice stretch across your chest. As you settle, if you feel like your chin starts to creep higher than your nose, you could pull your mat into a triple fold or a roll to serve as a pillow, or you could add a blanket between the back of your head and the floor. That'll help your neck stay released instead of clenching through the neck. This will be our home base for a series of stretches as we go kind of around the world of the hips. And then there will be an option to stay here for your final relaxation or to move away from the wall. By then you may have had quite enough of the wall. We'll go around one leg at a time. And let's start with the left tonight. Take your hands up to the back of your left thigh and clear your left heel off the wall. While you've got the heel off the wall, work around your lower leg with a few circles of the ankle. Circle it the other way too. Pause and point your toes. Flex your ankle, pull your toes back towards your face. Two or three more times like that. Feel the calf stretch that emerges as the top of the ankle flexes. Maybe if you can really point your toes, you'll feel stretch in the front of the ankle as well. Cool. 
Now pause with your foot in a neutral position. Spread your toes really wide, like you're making a turkey hand with your, with your hand. <laughs> Good. And then squeeze your toes together, like you're making a fist with your foot. Inhale, turkey foot. Exhale, fist. And one more time. Good. Now let your foot be mostly neutral. Maybe a light press up through the heel and pull back through the toes will feel good. If you haven't already felt a uh, stretch through your hamstrings, you could try pulling your leg slightly closer to your left shoulder so you feel a sensation that should be in the center of the back of the thigh, not way up towards your sitting bones and neither toward the back of your knee. At present, notice how your toes are pointing straight up past your left shoulder. Inwardly rotate your left hip so that your toes now face out toward your right shoulder. Make sense? Yeah. So your toes and your knee are moving because the action is coming from the hip. Now let your left leg track over to the right. And you'll probably feel something. If you don't feel something, let me know. Okay, good. Stop when you first feel something. It's probably the outer hamstrings somewhere along the outer line of the leg. Yeah. So you can fine tune this by bending your knee more or less. Good. You can lighten up and just cross your left ankle over your right ankle here at the wall, super casual. Or you can hang out with your leg inwardly rotated, internally rotated and slid over to the right for another five breaths. We'll back out of this one, come back to neutral. Now let's try external rotation from the hip. That means your left knee and toes will face more over to the left, kind of frog leg style. Good. Bend your left knee and drop it down towards your left armpit. You can rest the sole of your left foot on the wall, or you can let the sole of your left foot face up toward the ceiling like a happy baby pose. Either one of those is totally fine. And if you feel like your butt has begun to levitate, that's some advanced yoga right there, but it really is a back stretch that you're getting rather than a hip stretch. So if your butt starts to curl up off the floor, scoot away from the wall a few inches so that you can keep the back of your pelvis level and heavy down. I expect you'll feel this in the inner line of your left leg. Let's take another five or six breaths. We'll keep this very bend in the left knee and come toward a figure four. That means your left ankle will cross over your right thigh or your right shin if right thigh feels too aggressive. You got it. Yeah. Again, feel the back of your pelvis heavy down along the floor. Try not to let your butt be levitating because that's really just a stretch from your back. If you still feel nothing, you could try bending your left knee, and sorry, bending your right knee and flipping the sole of your right foot to the floor or even sliding your right foot down towards your bottom some. If it starts to feel too folded in, too pretzely, back off to where it felt interesting but still relaxing. If you get too aggressive with these hip stretches, you wind up creating the exact opposite effect of what you were looking for. We're trying to release tension. And if you get hung up on like being the tightest pretzel and winning the yoga pose, then you're going to actually overstimulate your nervous system and freak yourself out. About five more breaths. See where you could relax more. Often the jaw just starts to clench in response to uh, an overly aggressive hold. In the next couple breaths, stretch your left leg up alongside your right. 
take any halftime movements that would feel good. You could slip both feet to the wall and let your knees bend. You could just keep your legs up. Good. Now, if you're getting sick of this position, you could do the other side from flat on your back. This is totally fine. When we come through the second side, you have a sense of where we're going with these moves. You can always move to the next one sooner or stay in one that feels especially good to you longer. It's tempting, as Confessions of a Yoga Teacher, for me to rush you through the second side because I've already given the smart instructions I had to give. So don't let that happen. Take your time. We'll start with the right heel lifting off the wall. Your hands will reach around to the back of your right thigh. While you've got your foot clear of the wall, do a few circles of your ankle in either direction, like three to five circles in either direction. It's awfully quiet with these circles. Sometimes it sounds like we're making popcorn. And as long as there's no pain associated with that pop and crackle, that's okay. Come to neutral foot. We'll point and flex a few times. As you point, you can really um, work the arch of your foot and curl your toes in. And as you flex, you can pull your toes back toward your knee. Feel the back of the lower leg engaged to stretch the front and the front of the lower leg engaged to stretch the back. One or two more of these. We'll come to neutral foot. Spread your toes. Again, like you're making a Thanksgiving turkey drawing with your hand. You know how your hand would spread. Then clench your toes in. Inhale to spread open and exhale to close in. One more time. Good. Now, mostly neutral, a light press up through the heel, a light pull back through the toes. And if you haven't been experiencing a stretch down the central line of your hamstrings yet and you want to, you can pull your right toes slightly more out towards your right shoulder or the airspace over your right shoulder. Make sure that you feel this in the belly of the muscle, not up toward the sitting bone and not toward the back of the knee. take the lights down since we know where we're going here. Next up is internal rotation of the right leg. And this is the one that can feel like, whoa, what is happening? So sometimes just that rotation that turns your right toes from facing over your right shoulder to facing over your left shoulder already gets you the stretch in the outer right hip. In fact, if it feels too strong, don't rotate quite so far. Or if you'd like to go searching for it, you can cross your right leg over to the left. We're not twisting. The pelvis stays steady down against the floor. Good, you guys. So you can make this really casual by resting your right heel against your outer left ankle. You can make this uh, stronger, spicier by moving your right foot more toward the space over your left shoulder. Check in with the back of your neck. Keep it relaxed, keep it long. Next step, we'll take the foot to the other direction. First, we come back through central. We externally rotate the leg, so your knee and toes face over to the right. Good. Then we'll bend the knee. Drop your right knee down towards your armpit. The sole of your right foot can face toward the ceiling or it can face in toward the wall. It could even touch the wall. Make sure that your butt isn't levitating. If it wants to levitate, scoot your entire body away from the wall some.
Keep slow, long, full breaths. The last of these asymmetrical poses is to take your right ankle across your left leg. Maybe it goes across the thigh or the shin. Your right knee rolls away from your face. Your left knee bends. The sole of your left foot could flip to the wall or slide down. Keep your pelvis heavy. Don't let it levitate. When you feel like you've had the right amount of stretch here, let it go. Straighten your right leg up the wall. And take any movements that call to you. You could bend your knees, slide your feet down the wall, hug into a little ball. You could keep your legs up. You could take your legs wide or fan them into a diamond shape, a cobbler pose shape, soles of the feet together and knees out to the side. We did a lot of work around the back of the leg and then the inside and outside lines of the hip. There's an option here to stretch into the front of the hip. It would effectively be doing a shoulder stand, a half shoulder stand at the wall. It's like you're doing bridge pose. If your back is completely great and your neck is completely great, I can talk you into that. You shouldn't turn your head to the side once you start to come in. So you'll have to listen to my words. And if you have any questions, come out of the pose, look around, then you can try it again. Or you can just stay where you are or come flat out on your mat and do a regular bridge pose or supported bridge pose with the block under your pelvis. You'll bend your knees, walk your feet down. So you got maybe a 90 degree bend in the back of the knees, maybe slightly less uh, than that, slightly tighter than that. Take your hands alongside your hips to frame your hips. Press your palms down into the floor. Tuck your shoulders under some so you feel the flatness of your shoulder blades against the floor. Keep your neck long, and if you had had a blanket underneath your neck, this would be the time to slip it out just so you don't have too much of a bend in the back of your neck. Gorgeous, y'all. Tentatively, press your heels against the wall and try lifting your pelvis up and see how it goes. And if that doesn't feel good, then come back down and forget the idea. If it does feel good, you may need to walk your feet higher so you can get your hips higher. Awesome. Reach your knees for the ceiling. Feel a stretch come along the front of your hips. Some folks will be happy to work their elbows down and take their hands up to their hips for support. Others will be fine with their hands down on the floor. This should not be too much for your neck. If it feels at all like it is, then just come down and don't worry about it. Good, good. You can stay there. If you're familiar with shoulder stand, you're free to reach one or the other or both legs up toward the ceiling. It's a good one to come out of carefully because you've got the wall there to help. So even when, well, at some point you will, <laughs> when you do feel ready to come out of the pose, you can bend one knee and then the other and your feet will find the wall.
When you lower down from this bridge at the wall, half shoulder stand or shoulder stand, it will feel nice to re-engage the back of your body to stretch the front, but we don't have room with the legs at the wall for a fish pose. Instead, you have to just kind of engage, like stiff as a board, light as a feather style. For that, I like to put my elbows down and my hands up like I'm holding a beach ball or doing the robot dance, and press down into the back of the pelvis, puff the chest up into the space between the hands, press the back of your head down into the floor, just so you feel the back line of the body engaging and the front stretching. Yeah. We have one more set of things that we'll do optionally at the wall or flatter down on the mat. So if you and the wall have had enough of each other, just slip your body uh, more into the room so that your head is toward the top edge of your mat and you can twist from down on your back. Or we'll bend the knees, walk the feet down, and we'll lower both feet over to the left. So you're tipping to your left hip. The sole of your left foot could come to the baseboard and your right foot could come pretty tight over your left. If this feels too tight, scoot your body away from the wall so that you get just the right amount of twist. Perfect, guys. Your left hand could come to your right knee and your face could be up or over to the right. Try to let your right shoulder be heavy down. You could even extend your right arm up toward the space by your ear. There has to be a slight element of chorus line coordination here since we're kind of tight. So let's use the next breath or two to work the feet up the wall and then down the other side. Along the way, you may press your feet against the wall, lift your hips, reset them against the wall or against the floor. Then take your feet down to the right until your right foot is near or on the baseboard. Your left knee stacks just as close to your right as feels good. You can always slide farther out into the room. Again, things can feel really different side to side here. Your right hand could come to your left thigh, your left shoulder is heavy down, your left arm might spread. This is our last asymmetrical pose. You can hold it as long as you like. Once it feels like it's finishing for you, you can come back up through center and you'll have a choice to make whether to stay at the wall or to scoot out. And for that scoot, you could actually turn to your side and then scoot so you're not scooting your whole back along the mat. So you can rest in legs up the wall or you could come more toward a flat corpse pose. This is a great time to add props and layers. Your sweater, your socks, a prop underneath your knees or um, a block or a bolster or a sandbag on top of your feet. Are you trying to get that there? We'll wait. I will come around with eye pillows. I see, yeah. And if you have some other prop that you would like, or if you don't have some other prop that you would like, I am happy to bring it to you. Raise a hand if you'd like an eye pillow.
get your sandbag for you. It's so hard to do yourself. <laughs> There's an art to it. Is that good? Does it feel balanced? Good. And those of you who are still in legs up the wall, if you'd like me to come and put a sandbag on your feet, flash me a sign. And I can do that. Okay, I see ya. Great. Like basically everybody. It's never too late to shift position. So if this starts to feel like it's just too much, you can always change. Other than that, there's no need. You're welcome. There's no need to shift. There's no need to make anything happen. You're just going to rest and breathe. And toward the end of this hold, I'll sound a chime. It sounds kind of like a wind chime. And then I will talk you out. Is that good? Is it balanced enough? Any other sandbag requests? See ya. I see you. I'll be right back for you.
Bring your attention back to your breath. Feel it coming in and down. Feel the action of receiving. Feel the action of release. As energy starts to come back on board with these deeper breaths, you can start to move your body. Now, depending on where you are, your movement might involve trapping your sandbag against the wall, then sliding it down by bending your knees, or stretching your arms and legs in opposite directions. Your movements can start small and grow bigger. And as they grow, they can help you bend your knees. Since we're tight, let's all aim to roll to the right side. You can rest on your right side with your knees bent. Here on your side, take stock. Here's a chance to be grateful for all the places in your body that feel good right now. And press the floor away and push your way up to sitting. You can sit with your back against the wall or you can sit just freely in space. If there's a prop handy, it can go under your pelvis. Hands anywhere that's comfortable, gaze down or eyes closed. Take a moment to remember your intention. With an inhalation, let's raise our hands forward and up. Let your palms meet overhead. Exhale, bend your elbows. Take your hands down to your heart. Here's time for individual dedication of your practice. We'll open our eyes and look around and offer collective dedication of our practice with namaste. Namaste.